This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this week we're going to be doing a kind of quick one-off video again for the holiday week, and then we'll be getting back into the systems tutorials next week. Uh, for this video, we're going to be doing a news ticker, like the sort of scrolling bar you see at the bottom of like cable news channels, kind of showing headlines and updates of things that are going on, which can actually be useful in systems-based games to kind of give your players a clue as to what's going on, say, in the background of your game that they might not be aware of, or can be used just for a visual effect in other games as well. So to get this started, we're going to be using the UI system. I'm starting with a um, new game scene here, and I'm going to go up to Game Object, UI, and create a panel. This is going to be the news ticker itself. I'm going to rename this to be uh, ticker. Then I'm going to reposition it in here. Um, so instead of stretching across the entire screen, it's only going to stretch across the bottom. I'm also going to reset its uh, position this way as well. So I'm going to hold Alt when I do that, and we're going to click there. And now we have our um, anchors and that all down here. Next, I'm going to go up to the height, and I'm going to change that to something like 48. And I'm going to make sure that the position Y um, is at 24 to kind of match that bottom level there. With that in place, I'm going to just quickly double check that our anchors are in the right position. Yeah, we want them across the entire bottom and the max um, across the entire bottom from 0 to 1, uh, but um, stuck to the bottom. And then for our Zero, um, X and Y, we can actually change the Y to zero so that it's also kind of locked um, pivot-wise to the bottom as well. Okay, with that all set, uh, the next thing we can do is we can create our ticker item. So for this I'm going to right click on the ticker itself in the hierarchy, go to UI, text, I'm not going to be using text mess pro for this, we're just going to use a simple text object from the UI for this. I'm going to rename this to ticker item. And I'm going to just set these manually for this one. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set its height to 44. I'm going to change its anchors a little bit. I'm going to change the X values both to 1. And I'm going to change the Y values to, um, actually they're going to remain at 0.5 and 0.5. However, I'm going to change the pivot to be 0 and 0.5. And what this is doing is if I switch this view here from the center to the pivot view, we see now that this is pivoting based on this um, sort of central um, but leftmost point here. So all we're really caring about is where the start of the text is. I'm also going to move the text so that it is centered on the uh, line here, and I'm going to increase the size of the text to something like, say, 40. Um, that'll be good there. Now you'll notice that at this point, though, this text is exceeding the width of this, and what we actually want this, this rectangle to do is to conform to however long our current message is. So we're going to add another component down here called the content size fitter. And I'm going to set the horizontal fit of this to preferred size. And what that will do is that means that this actual size of the rectangle itself, the entire width here, we can no longer control it because it's going to respond to what we write. If I were to write in here, you know, this is some news about our game, the rectangle extends to reflect that. And what's going to happen now is we're going to have this start where this is actually going to appear at this right side and then scroll across to the left. So we can kind of emulate that right now by just setting its position x to 0 and we see that it will start here and then as we reduce it it will scroll across and this is going to be the kind of effect that we're getting as we go. So for now I'm just going to put that back to 0 for the x position on the ticker item and I am going to create a couple of C-sharp scripts that we're going to be using to make this functional. So we're going to create our first C-sharp script, which will be called ticker, and a second C-sharp script called ticker item. I'm going to add the ticker script to the ticker itself, as well as the ticker item script to the ticker item. Double check that that's on there. That's on there as well. And now I'm going to take specifically the ticker item and drag it back into my assets folder here to make it into a prefab. With that as a prefab, it's now blue here, I can delete the ticker item from the um, hierarchy of the sample scene. Save that quickly, and now we can jump into coding our ticker. Open this up in Visual Studio.
And then here we're going to set a few um, initial variables. The first one is going to be a public ticker item called our ticker item prefab. This is going to be where we get that prefab to um, populate our ticker. The next thing we're going to have is a um, kind of a speed or how long we want each item to appear on the screen. And we're going to call this our item duration. I'm going to make this a public float item duration. And actually I'll make that lowercase. And we're going to set it to a default of about three. Um, that seems to be a pretty good speed. However, we'll also add a range to this one. So if we add in sort of square brackets, we'll put range of between one and let's say 10. One is actually gonna be very fast across your screen and 10 is probably gonna be very slow, but it gives us some wiggle room that we can adjust as we want to. Next, we're gonna create a public array of strings. And I'm gonna call these filler items. Ideally, we would elaborate on this and make some kind of dynamically populated items as events happen. For the purposes of this video right now, though, we're just going to be using sort of items that might be filled in when there's nothing else going on. You might have, you know, some either funny headlines or just some generic headlines that would always work for you here. Next, we're going to create a few private uh, variables as well that the ticker is going to figure out for itself. The first is going to be a float width. This is going to just keep track of its own current width so that um, we can calculate how um, the speed based on that item duration as well as how the um, ticker items should manage themselves. Next we're going to have a float called pixels per second. And this is going to be sort of the um, kind of take this item duration and use it to create figure out what exactly um, the speed of these uh, ticker items should be so that we don't have to run that calculation every single uh, frame that these ticker items are moving. And finally, we're going to have a ticker item called the current item, which is really the most recent item so that we can track when we need to create a new item. With all that, we can do some initialization in our start method. So in here, we're going to have our width get set to get component rect transform and then we're specifically going to get the rect attribute and we're going to get the width off of that. Next using that now that we have the width set we can figure out our pixels per second so we'll say pixels per second equals our width divided by the item duration and then lastly, when we first start our scene, we want to make sure we're populating at least one ticker item to get this going. So we're going to call on a method we haven't written yet, but we're going to call add ticker item. And we're just going to give it our filler items at index zero. So whatever the very first filler item is. Next, in our update method, um, we're going to check a couple things as well here. The first thing we're going to see, um, really we're checking one thing, is that if the current item in our ticker, that most recent item has kind of passed that right boundary so there would just be open space beyond it, we need to add a new item so that it continues to fill that ticker. So here we're going to say if current item dot get x position, and this is another uh, parameter that we're going to be creating is less than or equal to negative current item dot get width, another parameter we'll be creating, then we'll add ticker item. And in this case, we'll still use something from filler items, but we'll just use a random item from it. So we'll say filler items random dot range between zero and filler items dot length. So this is just going to pick a random number from the start of filler items to the end of it and get us the string at that particular index. Now obviously we're getting some complaints here because we we're referring to a lot of stuff we haven't created yet, uh, but we're going to start fixing that now. First thing we're going to create is this add ticker item uh, method. So we'll say void add ticker item and we're going to pass into this a string called message. And all we're really going to have to do in here is we're going to set our current item 
equal to, and then we're going to instantiate a new instance of our prefab. So we'll say instantiate ticker item prefab. And we're going to want to make sure that the parent is this ticker, this ticker itself, so that it's positioned correctly automatically. So we'll just say transform for the parent. And then we'll say current item dot initialize. And this is another method we're going to create inside of our ticker item. And we're going to pass into this the width of our ticker. We're going to pass into this the pixels per second speed. And we're finally going to pass in the message that it should show. And that's all we need inside of here. Now, we can go into our assets folder, either in the solutions explorer, or you can go back to Unity. And we're going to open up our tick and ticker item script. In here. Uh, we are going to need another namespace in here. We're going to use using unity engine.ui because we're going to need access to that text um, component that we have on our ticker item. And we're going to add a few more variables here as well. We're going to have a float ticker width, which is going to store that value that we pass in in the initialize method. We're going to have a float pixels per second which is going to store that speed we pass in. And we're going to have a rect transform RT, which is going to be sort of a time saver that we don't have to get component every time that we want to get certain values. We're also going to have a couple of public properties. Those are that get x position and get width. So these are going to be sort of the dimensions that we really care about in our, um, in our ticker item. And so we're going to be able to get those uh, publicly from the ticker. So we can say public float get x position. We're going to use get, which means that this is just a parameter that's going to simply get this value we can never assign to it. And we're going to say return rt dot anchored position dot x. And this is important because this is going to make this relative to that right edge of the ticker rather than anywhere else on the screen. We're also going to have public float get width is again going to get, and this one is going to return the RT, again, rect.width, very similar to what we got for the uh, ticker itself earlier. With those, we can now use our um, initialize method. We're going to say public void, we'll create this method, initialize. And now, unfortunately, for some reason, uh, Unity likes to, or Visual Studio likes to, pre-populate that with a, um, an event that Unity stores. So we're just going to um, undo that. And now we're going to pass in a few parameters here. We're going to pass in float ticker width, another float for pixels per second, and finally the string message. So inside of here, we're going to set our own, this particular instance of ticker width equal to that parameter ticker width. Likewise, this dot pixels per second equal to pixels per second. And um, our RT is now going to equal get component rect transform. And we're going to use our message and set that to our text components text. So we're going to say get component text dot text equals message. We're not actually going to cache this one in a variable up here because we're only really setting it right at the beginning. However, if you wanted a situation where you could change these ticker items dynamically um, as things are happening, you might want to store this one in a variable as well. We do not need the start method for this component, but we are going to use our update method to actually move this um, along the ticker. So we will say in here, rt.position plus equals the vector 3 dot left, moving it you know, left across the screen, multiplied by that pixels per second that we figured out multiplied by time dot delta time, so we get that actual smooth motion per second no matter what our frame rate is. 
Next, the last thing we want to check here is if this particular item has gone off the screen, we want to destroy it. It's no longer really of use to us. We could also put it back into an object pool if we wanted to handle things that way, but for right now we're just going to destroy it because it's a little bit quicker. So we'll say if get x position is less than or equal to 0 minus the ticker width minus get width. So we're getting, so this means that it's, you know, not only gone across the entire screen, but now it's also like the very end of it has gone off the screen as well. If all of that is true, then we'll simply destroy game object, and that will eliminate this particular ticker item. And that is all the code we need to do. We can now jump back to Unity and kind of set up these objects. At this point right now, our ticker item is actually in good shape. There's nothing we really need to do to customize this any further, but we do want to add into our ticker. We need to make sure that we both have the prefab in there. So that is in our property there. And we need to give it some filler items. If we have none, this will throw an error at us and not work. So I'm gonna put in, you know, let's say five items here. We'll say, you know, hello world for the first one out of a sense of tradition. You can maybe just say something like, hi there, um, this is a news ticker item. This piece of news is the longest one we'll write. And good news, everyone. Save those. And now we'll always get the hello world as the first one because that's how we're telling our ticker to start, but then from there it'll randomly choose between these. So we can hit play right now, and we will see that sure enough we get each of these kind of comes through. It's actually even at this, this um, item duration of three moving pretty quickly, but we see that they each populate, and we can see on the game, or the scene view here rather, that once we reach the end of one, it um, once it reaches the end of the screen rather, it just disappears, so we're never, you know, continually overloading our scene with these but they keep on moving through. I may even slow this down a little bit, give it a longer duration, maybe even um, up to like six seconds. Save that and hit play. And there we see we get a much more kind of tempered um, speed. However, the other thing is that these are all really butting up against one another right now. And there's a couple ways we can solve this. Um, I think the way that I'm going to do right now is just to kind of add in a little bit of a buffer on the string itself. And so what we'll do is we'll go back into Visual Studio And we'll go to our um, uh, initialization here where we're adding the message. And in addition to the message itself, we're simply going to concatenate on a um, quote, space, a um, just a vertical bar, and another space. And that's just going to give us a little bit of space between each of these messages. If I save that now, go back to Unity and hit play. we see that we have at least a little bit of space there now so that we can delineate between these different um, pieces of news. And um, you know you can obviously customize these any way you want. We could also do a lot of customization here with the panel itself, with the text itself. Um, there's a lot more that you can do with this, but this is just a kind of a way to get a rudimentary news ticker running so that you can see when events or you know give other information to your player in a relatively you know noticeable but not overwhelming way on your screen. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I uh, hope this helps with your game dev, and I'll see you next time.